There is a lot of confusion around mesh terms and the mesh database within PubMed. And so hopefully I can clear things up in this video by demonstrating what the mesh database is, why use the mesh database and how we can use the mesh database to improve our literature searches. In order to understand what the mesh database is, I want to first introduce the mesh terms. Mesh terms are the controlled vocabulary thesaurus used for indexing references in PubMed. I like to think of them as tags assigned to research papers that describe the contents. This paper, for example, by Zhao et al, talks about the coronavirus disease in 2019 and gives a clinical update. So we can see by glancing at the abstract, this paper is going to talk about COVID-19, going to talk about viruses and epidemiology as well as pathology. So if we scroll down to the mesh terms, we can see what has been assigned to this paper. And so you can see here that the mesh terms associated with this article include COVID-19, antiviral agents, pandemics, as well as some of the pathologies like stroke. You can look up these mesh terms individually by going to the mesh database. You can access the mesh database by going to the main PubMed page and then clicking on mesh database. We will use our previous example and look at the mesh term antiviral agents. The mesh page is divided into several sections. There is usually a definition, additional settings to refine the search, entry terms, and how this term is hierarchically organized in the mesh database. Additional settings can be useful to refine what you're looking for. Subheadings can be very useful. Some mesh terms can be too broad, and so subheadings can focus on a particular area and make your search more specific. For example, you may only be interested in the toxicity of antiviral agents. And so you'll click on toxicity and then add to the search builder. It's worth noting as well that these subheadings can be searched individually as well, but this goes beyond the scope of this video. If you click on the mesh major topic setting, this will only find references where antiviral agents are the main focus of the paper. If you click on this setting here, it will only search for the mesh term antiviral agents and won't search for mesh terms below its position in the hierarchical tree. These entry terms here are the terms that can be entered into the mesh database to get to this page. Think of it as synonyms of the mesh term. This next part here is the mesh tree. As mentioned earlier, mesh terms are controlled vocabulary, and so there is a structure to the language. You can see here, antiviral agents is within anti-infective agents, and that is within therapeutic uses, within pharmacological actions, chemical actions, and it goes all the way back to all mesh categories. Lastly, the search builder can be useful for a quick search. From here, I can either search PubMed directly or copy paste this text into a logbook where it can contribute to a larger search that I am doing. A natural question that arises is why use mesh terms when I can just search for things directly into PubMed. Mesh terms are useful because they group multiple variants of a word into one word. For example, if you want to find papers talking about bowel cancer, there are many different ways to search for this. You know, bowel cancer, bowel neoplasms, etc. and etc. See, all of these terms are grouped within the mesh term intestinal neoplasms. Mesh terms allow you to enter less words, but you capture more relevant results. How then does the mesh database help with the literature searching? Using mesh terms alongside your free text terms is the most efficient way to search for literature in PubMed. Please note that not all research papers will have these mesh terms tagged to them. This is quite apparent for very novel publications. It just means librarians at PubMed haven't assigned any mesh terms to it yet. This is when free text terms come in, or more specifically, 
we will be using tie-up terms. Tie-up terms will be the focus of our next video. Stay tuned. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. Thank you.